traveled far enough, and it's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again, when you're rested? <laughs> no, I'll stay here, and then this is where it ends. This is... where it ends? <laughs> What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you! Misha? You're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork! <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm... I'm... not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually... They gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, happy, angry, or, or sad, all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your, your hands, hands, always pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Pentaconian Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Eon would cast a glance at Penacony at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penacony Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. 
since the future of the Stellaron, Panacone, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. philosophy, and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. Here, Penacone's future? Fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy which led to all subsequent events. The script will also now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacone. And on the most terrible form? Does that the true death, where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. 
May we meet again in reality? Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Scorched Earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm. sprouted from the Earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame. My feet is death. May we meet, meet again, again in reality. reality. After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. More salvation. <laughs> you mean... my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... Something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. Though its definition escapes me, isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. The tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. It will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. Now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, Then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's 
get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. Mm. Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely wanted me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this... Faint, warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that forever, as long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shit. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire, 
do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the paradises under the influence of the Harmony, a sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu major and minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or, how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other Paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. I would disagree. Biori Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is... different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impure... Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazeront, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation, and the Order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain Eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the Crusade against the Imperator Insectorum, and devoured Anna the Order for- Holy Forgaroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless pad- But I don't see any descendants of the Propagation in Penacony. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the fa- I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Holy <sighs> this is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Asdana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Exactly. The assistance from the Lorfu Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also... Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. An eyepiece. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes? The very... <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival. In but the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. 
You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. <laughs> All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you... <sighs> is... Of course. You're still... The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the Harmony. And reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world, instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So... It's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. Why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is... eerily quiet. Even if we're late, a grand theater like this shouldn't be com Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone.
atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Puppets, part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. grand theater in the dreamscape. So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. <sighs> you scared me! Where are you now? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the Dusk Wars, darkness veiled the sky, and chaos consumed the earth. A sincere heart prevails. Anna, the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. nebulae and forged them into pigs, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys and the sun rose. Strike the black keys and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That 
marked the second day. to hold on to. Perhaps this so-called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Pentagoni's past. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions. I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Panacone was still a frontier prison. Thank <laughs> you. 
stand still. In 147 AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. Thank you for staying here, honorable travelers. The three nameless stayed on the planet, endeavoring to spread the tenets of trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. Let's build another prison, not within the prison. Once again, as Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. I hope you like this land of freedom on a scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IP freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for them. Hey, why do we have to fight while enjoying the show? Her I desire not only your enjoyment, but also your assistance with completion. Walker flies an endless abyss! Together as one! Humanity's creation! <laughs> Say 
goodbye. Amidst a raging war, the frontier prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. It appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too... literary for my taste. But the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! Thank <laughs> you. 